guys, I'm Madison Mary and welcome back to my channel today. I have my February wrap up for you guys. So let's do some quick statistics. I read 11, he says an 11, 11 physical books. <laughs> Seven of those were fantasy, two of those were contemporary, one of them was a romance, and the other one was a non-fiction. Then out of those, we had eight YA and three adult. My total page count was 3,000, this is not 3,971 pages. <laughs> but without further ado, we're gonna start with my lowest rated read and work up to my highest rated reads. So I'm gonna start off with the non-fiction that I read this month because, well, it's not even this month, like I, I'm in a neuroscience literacy class at the moment, and so there are four books I'm reading over the course of the semester that are all neuroscience-y books. And so the one that we read, the first one we read, which I finished in Feb, was Behave by Robert M. Saplosky. Wow, you can't even see that. This is what the cover looks like. We read 300 pages of this one. All the other books we're reading fully, but this is the only one we only read half of it of. So in my page count, I only counted the 300 pages, and on Goodreads, I counted this as being completed because at this point in time, I'm not gonna finish the book, but from the 300 pages we read, it was really interesting, and you know. There were two books that I rated three. Why do I keep doing this? This doesn't count! Ugh. There were two books I read at 3.5 stars. The first of those, this was the first book I read this month. I read it from the end of Jan into the beginning of Feb, and that was All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I was actually on Adeline Grace's street team, and I got this signed arc from her, which was really awesome. I wanted this to be a five star read, and I think that the biggest issue I had reading this was the fact that I read it over a two week time span where I was constantly starting it, stopping it, starting it again, stopping it, and that doesn't really work for me as a reader. I need to read things in an, a short time span or else the longer I wait the less immersed I feel in the world and that really impacts my enjoyment of it. So in this book we follow Amora Montara and she has been training all her life to become the next High Animancer of the Kingdom and the High Animancer is basically someone with the power over souls and soul magic and she's supposed to take over after her dad. However in order to claim her right as the crown heir she has to do a performance to show that she has control over her magic because this magic is so dangerous. On the night of this performance of her magic it goes horribly wrong and she ends up having to flee. When she flees she ends up coming in contact with this pirate named Bastion and he ends up bringing her aboard his ship which is a magical ship. It's about her helping him get back his magic because his magic was stolen while he helps her kind of reclaim her right to her throne. This was really fun. I loved the banter between Amora and Bastion. It was hilarious. There is also a very vicious but sexy mermaid in this who I adored. I cannot wait to see more of her. She's probably like one of my favorite characters in this. I love all the different magic systems that are in this, so it was a really fun read, but it was just a 3.5. It could have been more for me, but it was a good enjoyment and, you know, that's that. The other 3.5 star book I read this month was Havenfall by Sarah Holland. I ended up loving the back half of this a lot more than the first half. So the way that this works is we have Earth, and Earth is called Haven because there's no magic there. And in Colorado there's this town called Havenfall, and at Havenfall, on top of this massive mountain, very far away from the little civilized town is the inn at Havenfall. And this inn is where there are different portals that take you to different realms. And the inn at Havenfall is basically the way station between all these different portal realms. And so every year there is a summit in which delegates from the different realms come and they do politics and stuff like that. When the new summer starts and we had the first night of the summit in which Maddie is hoping to finally prove to her uncle that she is ready to become his protege and take over the inn, someone is murdered and suddenly all the rules that have been at Havenfall for all these years start being torn apart. Maddie must then take on a more pivotal role in her society in order to ensure that Havenfall does not disappear and that she still can keep her claim on this place. This book is more so about a lot of political intrigue and mystery and kind of corruption, which really surprised me. I am a huge fan of mystery subplots, so I would actually call this like a fantasy mystery than anything else. And I loved during it being able to be like, hmm, I don't think I trust this character or being like, hmm, these are some context clues. And it was really fun in that aspect. However, because there are a lot of different plot lines that you are actually following in this, like we have a lot of different tangents. It's not very cohesive. And I feel like we could have delved a lot deeper in a lot of these. So this book felt a lot more as a setup novel for the rest of the series. Although I think it's only a duology. So 
We'll see. The other issue I had with it is, while I think Sarah Holland did an amazing job showing that Maddie is a 17 year old girl, she acts like a teenager. In a lot of fantasy novels I feel like our teenagers act a lot older than they are. Maddie does not. She acts like a teenager. She has all these self-doubts and she's very self-deprecating a lot of the time and she's quite whiny and you're, st I don't know, just being stuck in her headspace after a while just was so frustrating. I just didn't love her as a character because she lacked so much confidence in herself that it wasn't until like the last sixth of this book that she finally grew into her own. So that was kind of the biggest downfall for me, but I'm excited to see where this series keeps on going because it has a lot of potential. Now onto my four star read and that was Night Spinner by Addie Thorley. The more time I spent away from this book, the more I can't believe how smart it was. So this is Addie Thorley's sophomore novel and it is a Hunchback of Notre Dame retelling gender bent. So we follow Annabish and she is a night spinner. And this means that she has magical powers in order to speak with the shadows and she can kind of weave them. Like she is very, very powerful and there've only ever been a few of her kind. And so she was one of the King's warriors. However, after a freak accident that then left her completely mutilated, not just from the accident, but also because of punishment. She was sent to live in a monastery for the rest of her life in order to be, you know, still alive, but in punishment. However, Annabish's foster sister comes one day and offers her a chance at redeeming herself and being back in civilization and being back as a warrior. And in order to redeem herself, she has to find this bandit who is kind of the king of all these thieves that has been stealing from the king and kind of revolting. And so we follow Annabish as she goes to try and find this guy. This book just shocked me a lot because you follow alongside Annabish as she is trying to kind of come to terms with the fact that she used to be this strong, powerful person, but after everything that happened to her, she has just become so meek and distrustful of her own self. Watching her redevelop throughout this novel and kind of grasp at who she is again and kind of falter and make mistakes was just a very beautiful process and I just adore Addie Thorley's writing. It's just very lyrical and lush. But I think that what really stood out a lot to me in this book was that there, you, you don't know who to trust and you can't trust anyone. This is a intense, war that is going on between Annabish's kingdom and these other kingdoms and you don't know who's who, who to trust, like what's really going on and it just, it really blew my mind. I did not see any of the plot twists coming and so I would really highly recommend this. I like need the next book now. It ended on probably one of the best cliffhangers I've read because you were like, oh my god, but not like so oh my god that you were pissed at it. You're like more oh my god now I need the next one. We have my 4.5 star read The Stars We Steal by Alexa Don. Alexa Don is easily one of my newest insta buy authors. That's not the word we use. Auto buy. Auto buy author. Insta buy. Wow. This is kind of the bachelor bachelorette set in space. It's also a very basic retelling of persuasion as well. A hundred or so years ago Earth had its newest ice age and only the most wealthy and noble people from each kind of country managed to make it out on spaceships. So all the spaceships are kind of remnants of our current day countries. So we follow Princess Leo. Leo's ship has kind of been on a downfall, her little, the little ship that they have docked at the Scandinavian, because her dad and her sister have kind of been running their fortune dry. Leo now has to participate in the Vogue season, which is this four week process in which of age princes, princesses, nobility, um, presidential sons and things like that all come together and do this kind of like four week group dating thing, matchmaking wise. And at the end of it, hopefully you get proposed to. This is kind of Leo's last chance to find, well, her dad wants her to participate in it, to find a suitable husband that will bring money to their ship because they have no fortune but they do have their royal title. That's basically what it's about. However, on the first night of the Evolve season, Leo's old childhood crush comes back. He has been gone for the last three years and he's hell bent on making her life awful and she's like, Ugh. I loved this. It was so much fun. I adored Leo. She is actually a plus size character and there's a lot of LGBTQ plus representation including ace rep. I love our lesbian character. She is just so funny. She makes so many hetero comments about the way that the Vogue season kind of 
goes. If anyone is ever in a book slump, I will easily recommend this book to them to get them out of a reading slump because that's what it did for me and I was so, so happy about that. The ending did feel a bit rushed. I wish we had like an extra 20 or so pages just to really kind of expand more on it. But other than that, it was pretty perfect. For my five star reads, the first one I'm going to talk to you guys about is The Seventh Son by Lainey Forbes. So there's a lot going on in this. The synopsis is actually super long, so I'm going to try my best to kind of give you a quick idea of what it's about. It is based on Mayan and Ottoman kind of myths and laws that came from them, as well as the idea. So. The way this world works is you have, there have been eight apocalypses in which the sun has been destroyed. And each time an apocalypse happens, the great creator will have one of her children sacrifice themselves, which is a god or goddess, and they sacrifice themselves. So there are like eight different clans that each have a specific family that is a descendant from that god or goddess and they have a specific power. So we are following Mayana and she is from the clan that comes from the goddess of water. And so her blood gives her like water magic and all this comes, all the magic in this is blood related. So do be aware of that before you go into it. There is a lot of animal sacrifices in this as well as like having to like cut your hands and stuff like that to draw blood for the magic. So that is a quick little warning. But we follow Mayana and she secretly hates the sacrifices that have to be done in order to appease the gods. Then we follow Prince Akin and he comes from the main god who was the first one sacrificed and he is the sun god and his magic helps raise the sun every morning to bring light to their whole country. And so he is the prince and when the book starts, his dad has just died. And so the prince must now take on the throne. He can't become emperor until the emperor's trials are conducted. A noble daughter from each of the different clans comes and tries to prove their worth in order to be chosen as empress. And whoever of those eight daughters are not chosen as the empress, the other seven will be sacrificed in order to bless the marriage and the new emperor's reign. Mayana is the only daughter from this water clan that has this power, who is a descendant of the goddess, and so she ends up being sent. We follow her having to go to the palace and try and compete to be empress, because if she does not get chosen, she will be sacrificed, and so what I really loved about this story was the whole lore and mythology that is surrounding it and the religion aspect because it is so intricately woven and it was just so interesting to learn about how their world works and how their worshipping kind of functions in their lives. Learning also the different noble princesses, there are another two of them that I absolutely adore and their magic was so cool. The one issue I did have with it was the fact that the romance between Mayana and Prince Akin did feel a bit insta-lovey, but it was something that I was easily able to get over as I read the book. What I loved was watching Mayana as she grew more and more more confident in herself and how she had all this inner turmoil going on and I just really loved her as a character. Prince Akin kind of annoyed me because he was just a walking talking self-pity party which kind of annoyed me. It's fine because you so much else was amazing that that didn't really matter and the ending of this was so good. Oh my god, I loved the ending of this and I'm so excited for the sequel. This ended and I just, I want more from this world because it is just so interesting. So if you're someone who loves reading a book and learning about the fantasy lore in a world and you love something that's very rich and beautifully crafted, you're gonna love this. The next five out of five star book we have is Bone Cryer's Moon by Catherine Purdy. I absolutely love this. This is the last book I read in February. We have three different perspectives. We follow Elise, Sabine, and Bastion. Elise and Sabine are Bone Cries, who are, they're actually called Luresses, and the Lures ascend to becoming various of the dead after they have done four ritual sacrifices. And if they do not bury the dead, then the dead will actually wreak havoc on the living. So it's a very important kind of thing that they do. However, they are considered myth to mortals. And then we have Bastion, who is a mortal, and he saw his dad be killed by a bone crier when he was six years old because it was that bone crier's rite of passage, her fourth and final sacrifice that she has to do to become a farrier. And so he has vowed revenge on the bone criers ever since then. And so when this story takes place, we have Elise, 
who is the daughter of the matriarch completing her rite of passage in order to become a fairy. However, everything goes horribly wrong when Bastion interferes. I was hesitant at the beginning because I started off not really loving Bastion. The romance between Bastion and Elise is one of the most prominent enemies to lovers I have ever witnessed. Like, it is enemies. Enemies to lovers. Like, they don't just, you know, think, oh, I hate you, you suck. It's Oh, sleep with one eye open or else I will murder you. I loved their progression because it was very beautifully woven. You could see it happening slowly and their denial of it. I also really love Sabine. She is just such a soft and vulnerable girl who kind of learns to grow a backbone throughout this and she becomes so awesome. Like, I have never been more proud to see character growth than I have been with Sabine. She just... <laughs> I'm so proud of her! Like, she did such a great job in this book! Like, Sabine! The one thing I hate about duology sometimes is that the plot that starts in this never gets resolved and is dragged over into the sequel. And that just really frustrates me sometimes. What I loved about this is that we have kind of two plots going on and one plot is resolved in this and then you have another plot that kind of bleeds into the sequel. And that is so much more fulfilling to me as a reader than feeling as though I just read 400 pages and nothing really became resolved. The next five to five star read I read was Be Not Far From Me by Minnie McGuinness. This was my first read for, no, it was my second read for the contemporary a -thon. I've always loved Minnie McGuinness's work. She's one of my favorite authors. This is a survivor story where we follow Ashley, where her and her friends before their senior year go on a hiking adventure over the night in the woods, I think it's the Appalachian Mountains, and they end up getting plastered and drunk and high and all that kind of stuff. And then Ashley ends up stumbling across her boyfriend cheating on her and she runs drunkenly into the night, falls into a ravine and slashes her foot. She wakes up the next morning not knowing where she is and she can tell that there is an infection brewing in her foot creeping up her leg and it's her survival story. I loved this. It is very gory and very descriptive in what is going on, so it is not for the faint of heart. I personally didn't think it was that bad. It was kind of cool, in my own <laughs> opinion. But it was a really quick read, and Minnie McGuinness is just such a phenomenal writer. Listening to Ashley's inner monologue throughout this, and her constantly just contemplating life and everything that's happened to her up until now was just really interesting to look into, and it's a very introspective novel, in my opinion. We then have the first book I read for the Contemporary-thon, which is Faker by Sarah Smith. This is a workplace romance, and the workplace we are at is a power tool company. So we follow Emmy and Tate. Ever since Tate started working at their power tool company, he has kind of been very cold and standoffish to Emmy, so she has kind of made it her thing where she thinks that he's now an awful dude. There ends up being a charity project that Emmy and Tate have to work together on, and so it's about their romance together as they work on that. It was just so sweet like you felt bad for Tate from the very beginning because you could tell that it was just one hell of a misunderstanding and I know sometimes misunderstandings as the foundation for why they dislike each other can frustrate a lot of people but I didn't really mind it in this sense like it was it was dealt with very well and I actually kind of appreciated it. Emmy is also Filipino and so we get a lot of Filipino rep in there, which I really loved. I just thought this was a really great romance story. I know a lot of people didn't like this when they read it, and I'm kind of one of the few who do love this book, but I definitely think that if you're someone who enjoys a very sweet and kind of hilarious romance, like this story is so funny. It's also very, very sex positive. Like, oh my god, such a sex positive romance. We love sex positive romances, guys. If that sounds interesting, like, please check it out. Now we're gonna go to probably my two, like, they would be six star reads if I could make them six star reads of the month. I'm gonna start with <laughs> The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. Trisha Levenseller is a goddess, 
Anyone who tries to say that she is not is incorrect. So The Shadows Between Us takes place in a world where it is ruled by the Shadow King and we follow Alessandra and she has a plan. She has kind of been ignored all her life as the second daughter. She has finally come up with a plan. She is going to woo the Shadow King. She's going to marry him and then she is going to kill him and become queen. And it is a fantastic idea until once she gets to the palace, she finds out that someone else is trying to kill the Shadow King. And she's like, you guys can't kill him until I marry him. So now she's trying to save the Shadow King so that she can then kill him herself. And oh my God, did I love this. Like there are so many quotable moments in this. I, I did not even mean to read this in one night. I just started reading it. And I think I got like halfway through it and I looked up and I go, oh, huh. And I went back down to keep reading it and then I had like this much left and I looked into the clock and it's like three in the morning and I was like, oh, well, guess I just keep going now and I finished it in one night and it was so worth it. Our main character, Alessandra, she reminds me a lot of Selena from Throne of Glass because it's the whole idea where you can be in relationships you know, you can have multiple sexual partners in your life. You can be a badass. You can still be, you know, really cool and tough, but love feminine things. Alessandra in this is actually a seamstress and she makes all of her outfits. And it's really fun because she's kind of breaking the whole Victorian norm. It's just like, there are so many beautiful moments in this that I just had to quote. Waiting, not waiting. One lover, a hundred lovers. There should be no judgment either way. A woman is not defined by what she does or doesn't do in the bedroom. So true! Oh my god, I love this. Just please read it. If you love, like, two morally kind of definitely dark, dark shades of grey characters who kind of end up falling in love, who are both really badass, who are just very sex positive characters, this is just, this, this is just amazing. The last book I talked to you guys about is Bear Town by Frederick Buckman. If you have not seen my contemporary thon vlog where I bawled my eyes out while reading this on camera, I was on camera crying. <laughs> Can't believe I still did that. One of the best books that has ever dealt with rape culture and sexual assault and just how it plays into a society. This book is set in Beartown. They pin all their hope on their junior hockey league in order to kind of get any of their income and have kind of any trade with any other towns and things like that. So. There's a lot of pressure on the hockey team boys. We follow them and their championships and this sexual assault that happens that shakes the entire town. And uh, I like, I, I just want to tell people like, just read this. I know it seems out of your comfort zone. It's a hundred percent was out of my comfort zone. And I am so glad I read this because this book was life changing. And it's probably one of the best books I have ever read in my entire life. It is the first book that I have ever used a highlighter and like actually marked it. I needed to. This book demanded to be highlighted because the prose in this is some of the most beautiful prose I have ever read and I just, I cannot rave about this book enough. So just trust me on this. But yes, those were the 11 books that I read this month. If you guys read any of these or if I have inspired you to read any of these, please let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please hit the like button if you want to see more of me. Please subscribe to my channel and until next time, thanks a bunch guys.